There are many sources of diversity in populations, and therefore on planet Earth in general. Mutations are a major source of variation or differences in populations, and they're a major cause of evolutionary change. What is a mutation? A mutation is any change in DNA. Okay. Mutations can be beneficial, they can be detrimental, or they can be benign or neutral. Most of these benign neut uh, neutral mutations occur um, all the time in your body. And um, more often than not, your body detects these mutations and actually repairs them through DNA repairing enzymes in your body that you make. So that's pretty great. But once in a while, these mutations come through and confer a pretty severe effect. Let's focus on the major types of mutations. I'll just list them off really quickly at first, and then we'll give an example. Um, one major type of mutation is called a point mutation. And there are three different kinds, missense, silent, and nonsense. Another type of mutation is called a frame shift mutation. And there are several kinds, insertion, deletion, translocation, and tandem repeats. So let's give, um, let's give a couple quick uh, details before we start illustrating some examples and just run through some important things to remember. So just recall in DNA, that uh, nucleotide bases um, pair up and bond hy through hydrogen bonds down the middle. Now this sequence could be A, T, C, C, A, G, and its corresponding sequence would be T, A, G, G, T, C, through that principle of complementarity. Well, a mutation would be any change in any of these letters. Um, think about randomly changing a word in a sentence or the letters in a word. That entire sentence or that entire word may be illegible or under misunderstood. The same goes for the body. If the instructions are wrong, the DNA instructions, then the messenger RNA our inst instructions go wrong okay, or illegible to the body. And then how that gets translated into proteins is by coding for certain amino acids, which then become inaccurate or misplaced. This can lead to serious effects, diseases like Crohn's disease or uh, sickle cell anemia, muscular dystrophy, and the list goes on and on. So first, let's give an example of um, a point mutation. Um, a point mutation is really any mutation that, um, that where there is a substitution of just one letter for another. So let's start with a, a missense mutation. Okay, so we'll put missense up here. And you feel free to copy this on your own paper as we go along. In a missense mutation, let's say the original DNA is A, 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 C, C, G, a, T, A. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say they, uh, obviously this has two strands, so just imagine the second strand, you know, is in a shadow next to it. But let's just say that we, um, you know, change or mutate the first C to a T. Okay. So now this is T, C, see, I almost wrote J. TCG, ATA, and we keep the first ATA. -A. So these two look very different now. Let's see what happens. Um, so what, what would this code for in RNA is what we have to do first. We have to code from DNA to RNA. If you can remember that A corresponds to uracil in RNA. If you don't remember that, go back to our genetics chapter. And we're just going to transcribe DNA into RNA right here. Okay. If you look, if we change this uh, second codon, okay, or set of three letters in sequence, it will change uh, or potentially change the amino acid. But how do we know what amino acids there are going to be um, translated to? Well, we just look it up in the genetic 
code or the genetic dictionary. Okay, this is uh, what you know basically is the same code for bacteria, for um, you know for fish, zebras, um, monkeys, you name it. We're all the same genetic code. So U U U. If we look at the first letter here, the second letter here, and the third letter here, corresponds to phenylalanine, or we'll put PHA. Um, the original mutated DNA coded for the next amino acid as TCG. So let's find that down here. Which coded for A, sorry, it coded for CCG, which coded for GGC in RNA. So GGC would have been, the original would have been glycine. Okay. But the mutated DNA codes for A, G, C in RNA, as you can see here. So we look up our, we look up this mutated gene here, A, G, C, down below. A, first letter, second letter up here, G, and third letter here, C. And that corresponds to serine. Uh-oh. No matter what this last code is, we didn't mutate it, so we keep it the same. And what we're really looking at here is the definition of a missense mutation. What do we have here is the difference between glycine and serine, which could mean a big difference in the protein um, inside a cell. Okay, can confer a disease or um, even kill, um, you know, an embryo in, in, in growth, in early development. So this mutation is pretty bad. It's called a missense mutation. Bad. Okay. Uh, let's erase this and go through um, a silent mutation. A silent mutation would be any mutation where the same amino acid is code for as the original amino acid. And you might ask, how is that possible? Well, evolutionarily, I think our body systems have figured out a way to kind of protect us against random mutations. And this is one way it did that. Let's say the original sequence, again, was AAA. CCG, ATA, and the mutation in this in this picture um, is where maybe the the G is changed to AC. So AAA remains this first part of the DNA, CC, and now it's changed to AC. So here's the mutation, and ATA. As we know, this is going to be coded into the same RNA and the same amino acid. But we know there's going to be a difference in this second code on here. So what's the difference? In RNA, CCG would code for GGC. And this mutated DNA, it would, uh, which would transcribe into RNA, would be GGG. What's the difference? Well, GGC, G, GGC codes for glycine. But GGG also codes for glycine. So therefore, if both of these um, codons code for glycine, is there a difference in the amino acid? No, absolutely not. Therefore, shh, this is silent. The body does not feel an effect, even though these bases change. The amino acids did not change. So think of a silent mutation as something that does not confer a change. We're happy about that. Or I guess we could say neutral. I'd be happy about that. So moving right along, last um, example of a point mutation would be called a nonsense mutation. And a nonsense mutation is where the mutation codes for an early stop. I'll make a stop sign, pretty pathetic stop sign here. Um, and let's go back to our original sequence, AAA, CCG, ATA. Now, how do we code for an early stop? Well, mutation can happen anywhere in this sequence. Let's say the, the last A is changed to a C. But let's say this sequence goes on and on and on for like hundreds and hundreds of bases, okay? And this is just somewhere in the middle of the sequence. But let's just say this mutated gene is right here. It's, it goes from an A to a C. 
And this is all the same going backwards. And all the same is, and it's all the same going on and on and on throughout this code. Well, when we translate this, obviously it's the same here and it's the same amino acid here. But what happens over here? Well, the um, original RNA would read U, A, U, and the mutated would be U, A. What's the third letter? In the original DNA, it would be U, A, U. Coding for U, A, U, coding for tyrosine. Okay? But what happens to this mutated DNA? We code from a C to a G. And then we translate that U A G to, you got it, a stop codon. So instead of tyrosine, we are going to code for a stop. What's that going to do? It's going to take this string of amino acids in a chain, usually fold it up to make a protein, right? And instead of coding for all of these amino acids in the chain, it's going to stop here. And it's not even going to translate the rest of this code. So just imagine a big X through it, early stop. You think that's good for um, our bodies or for a protein channel and a plasma membrane or for carrying um, oxygen in red blood cells? No way. So an early stop would confer a big, a big serious effect and that would be called a nonsense mutation or premature stop. Let's go on. Frame shift. Frame shift mutations, I'll have you believe, as you'll see in a minute, are actually far more deleterious, even though they can all confer diseases. A frame shift insertion would be, um, you know, I like to give examples actually related to sentences when it comes to insertion and deletion. So let's just say, um, you know, there's a sentence called like, the fat cat ate the rat. An insertion would in, in, in insert a letter and therefore shift all these three letter codons down. Let's take the original sequence we had before. ATA. If I inserted AT right here, so let's put insertion, okay? What's going to happen is we always group our nucleotides in streams of three. So it's going to add to this code here. We're going to insert that T. It's going to read C, T, C, C, G, A, T, and then there's going to be an extra A over here and so on and so on. So as the, uh, the code gets translated, uh, transcribed, excuse me, and then translated into proteins, we're going to have one pretty messed up sentence. Okay, all the way down the line, this code is going to be offset. Big, 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 bad, no. So same goes for um, the differences in amino acids that will result in a deletion mutation. If we delete one of these letters, does the uh, code switch or, uh, or shift as a frame? Absolutely. In a deletion mutation, you would see original sequence AAA, C, C, G, A, T, A. And let's say we delete one of these A's. This entire frame here is going to be shifted to the left. So now we can just read it without this A. A, A, C, C, G, A, and then T, A, and so on. And the whole thing shifts to the left. Do these code for the same amino acids down here? Absolutely not. All of these, you know, there may be a chance that some amino acids line up, but this protein is definitely not what uh, your body intended to make. So is deletion good or bad? Seriously bad. Um, two more, real quick. Uh, translocation. Translocation. Uh, I like to illustrate, like I said before, with a sentence. Let's write this sentence. The fat, each are words in codes, in uh, three letter words, I should say, because they relate to the codon. The fat cat ate the, usually it's the rat. Fat cat ate the rat. So if I translocated, and I'll just put, tell you right now this is bad. 
In translocation, we simply change around the order of many of these, I guess, codons or words, you could call them. So the mutated DNA might read something like the eight cat the fat. And this is just, you know, kind of just a, a big jumble of these words, like you're shaking up dice and re-rolling. Um, translocation can happen, you know, at the ends of genes, in the middle of genes, um, and so on and so forth, resulting in uh, inaccurately translated proteins. And the last, and finally, type of mutation we'll go over today is called tandem repeats. Ever had somebody repeat themselves many, many times to you? It's kind of like what this is like. If we again had the sentence, the fat cat ate the rat, right? Tandem repeat would be something like the fat and then we keep repeating some codon or some set of letters over and over again. So the fat, the cat, perhaps the eight, the, 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 and it list goes on. You could just keep repeating some section of a gene in the middle of a, gene, uh, a particular gene sequence, coding for a protein that obviously uh, would not thrive and not you know, do much for the body at all. Um, perhaps coding for um, a really serious issue like a disease um, in your body. So just remember the different types of um, point, a simple sh uh, exchange for one letter to versus another, and which can have serious effects or can be silent, or frame shift mutations where um, entire codons or, um, you know, what you could call words in this code are shifted, causing serious effects.